Hi there, my name is Jet Johnson, and like Luke said, I am the CEO and founder of Leadfoot Racing. We are an automotive manufacturing company based here in Colorado Springs, so we already have a leg up on the competition for that one. Um, but we specialize in the entry-level enthusiast manufacturing of kit-based race cars. The problem that we are combating is the high cost of entry and participation in the motorsports community. We have people in side-by-sides, but no, most people don't understand that those are $30,000. With the higher cost of entry into the motorsports world, fewer and fewer people are going out and participating because they might start and then realize they can't afford it, or they just think it's a pipe dream. Um, and then the ones that do end up deciding, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it myself, it raises a lot of safety concerns because they might not know exactly what they're doing. Racing's dangerous. Most people don't realize that it's as dangerous as you are told. So our solution is the Little Dipper. This is our custom off the, from the ground up race car chassis. It is designed to be affordable with a starting price of $15,000 that gets you everything besides the engine and it's in kit form. So that way it teaches people how to work on their own car. It's safe, it meets all NASA and SECA standards, and then it's also expandable, so they're not stuck in a platform that they might not want to do six months from now. You don't know until you try. This is our current 2021 Little Dipper test car. Um, this is the third one we've produced. Uh, we're using it for development, testing, creating new packages. Uh, that way we can better develop the aftermarket essentially for our own car you want to be able to make the car your own so that's what we're trying to help the end customer do we also use it for test drives we're currently out and about at as many events as possible we have people come up pay for a test drive and then that goes towards the purchase of their car so our addressable market is our total addressable market is 29.3 billion dollars that makes that is made up about by about 9 million participants these are people that are competing at all levels below the professional league so f1 nascar that doesn't include them our um serviceable addressable our serviceable attainable market is about 2.8 billion and that's for the beginner racers somebody like myself that wanted to get into it i'm still going to events i want to be there but i'm not going to be a pro or i'm not going to be anywhere near that so our that was a fun one <laughs> magic um so our current beachhead market is the rocky mountain and colorado region for nasa and scca the reason we picked these we have 105,000 average attendance annually we um, have pinpointed that our target demographic is 24 to 36 in age and that falls into the early business professional maybe they went through school and they have a good job they worked and now they're trying to chase this dream of I'm gonna be a pro racing driver because now I can afford it um, we are also working with the Texas and the Colorado regions in order to create our own standalone racing class within NASA and SCCA that way we can branch out across the country and offer our car to compete with other versions of our car our go-to-market strategy right now is we're attending regional races as well as showcase events and car shows so the showcase events might be the um, I don't know if you guys know about it but the grid life Alpine Horizons Festival it's a music and a motorsports festival that's coming up in September we have as many booths and entries into these races and events as possible that way we can generate as much buzz across a wider audience we also already have seven letters of intent to purchase the car as well as 35 interested buyers once they get to test drive a more modern a 2022 car essentially our current business model is broken up into a primary and a secondary our primary is these face-to-face -face interactions where we sell the car we get the person in test drive it and then they're yeah i want to do this i can afford it i'm going to do it so our profit margins right now on the little dipper base kit is currently tracking 58 percent that will fluctuate by a percent or two. Um, and then we have optional add-ons like the packages that I mentioned. Those are going to be around a 43% profit margin. 
Um, our secondary market consists of more online formatting. We're currently implementing a rental car program where people can rent the car, we show up, and then they race themselves. They don't have to buy it. Much more affordable, and it gets us free publicity and free test drives, essentially. And then that's also made up of replacement parts because you crash when you're new at racing. You crash when you're not new at racing. Um, and then we have currently, we have just started introducing sponsorships into our marketing and testing program. That way we can go to more events and offset some of those marketing and testing costs. Our current competition is made up of other automotive manufacturers um, and then the used car market. So ours is centered up in the top right corner um, to be the most affordable while also being the easiest to use. You can buy a used car for slightly less, but you have to do a lot of work to it. That defeats the whole purpose of the safety concerns. You could pick a car by Palatov or Sierra down on the bottom left. They have entry-level cars that start at $40,000. They also have entry-level performance cars that start at $130,000. So affordable is kind of a loose term sometimes. So we're, we try to be as affordable as possible while also being as user-friendly. Our management team is currently made up of myself. I am the CEO, like I mentioned earlier. I have a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering, and I have a lifelong passion for racing. I could never afford to race. That's where this came from. Um, I'm currently looking to fill the COO position. Um, that will be the first person that is hired. We do, I, I do currently outsource or have contracts with a COO and an engineer. That way I don't have to keep them on the books all the time, but I can pull from their knowledge and their, well, their uh, connections. Our five-year forecast is a very, how we say, modest growth. At the five-year mark, we're looking at selling 108 cars. Um, that's a really nice, soft number of we can produce that with the equipment that we have. We've been currently in, uh, investing in automation. That way we can make the cars faster, make them more refined, have a better tolerance, while also cutting down the lead times. So this is based off of the current Little Dipper platform as well as a couple of upgrade packages. This is not including the rental program and this is not including aftermarket part sales or replacement part sales because we don't want to bank on everybody stuffing the car into a corner. Um, we currently have $150,000 invested into the company. $25,000 is my personal capital, and $125,000 is out or external. And we have recently gone up to $15,000 in capital for sponsorships. Some of the recent business expansions that we've done, uh, we purchased a new race trailer. That way we can bring more than one car to an event. And the CNC tube cutter is one of the pieces of equipment that we've purchased along with several other CNC equipment. So that way we can hold tighter tolerances and make the cars faster. That takes down what a normal fabricator would do in a week to two hours. The use of funds if we were awarded one of the torch grants is broken out in the pie chart of, on the presentation. We wanna use $12,000 to develop a fully fledged, top of the line, optioned out, 2022 Little Dipper race car. This will allow us to do some final development as well as get people in in that aha moment. Nobody wants to go dr test drive a Toyota Camry. They want to test drive a Lamborghini. So we want to build the high performance one so that way we can use, use it with our marketing budget to do promotional videos, promotional content that we can use for advertisement. We also want $15,000 for that marketing. That is because we want to try to go to, we don't want to, stay to Facebook ads. We want to go to more events. We want to have booths. We want to travel across the country. That's what the $5,000 is for to a different region. We can relatively easily stay in this region, but that's a limited market. We want to reach out to the East Coast. We want to reach out to California. Um, and then we also want to keep uh, 13,000 as working capital. Um, so the 13,000 is just for if we have an influx of orders, we have a little bit of capital to offset maybe slightly higher material costs. My name is Jed Johnson, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be up here. I am now opening the floor to questions. I'll start since it's in front of me. Uh, any plans for a Big Dipper? <laughs> yes, there is. So 
our car currently uses motorcycle engines as a way to keep it affordable and competitive. Um, we are looking into a Little Dipper that uses more modern or more mainstream car engine based platform. So ours is a single seater. Those will be two, two or more seaters. So yes, the Big Dipper is in the stars right now. <laughs> Can you actually fit two of these vehicles, two of the little dippers in that trailer? Yes, I can. Okay, that, that's not my question, but I was wondering. <laughs> that picture's very deceiving. I was sad to use it, but um, uh, I was like, hmm. it's a 24-foot enclosed. The car is 10 and a half feet long, end to end, and then with a little bit of room for tie-downs. So yes, we can fit two cars. So I, I might have missed it, but I heard 58% margin. What does it cost to get the parts for it, and then what do you sell it for? So we sell the base kit for $15,000. That is... No optional extras, that's not us assembling it because it is kit-based. Um, but that is a roughly, I think it was, it was $4,000 in raw material, right around $4,000. And then the way that we have the business structured is in case we do have an influx of orders or if we have a null in the season because it's seasonal. Um, we don't want to have to keep these employees on all the time not doing anything. So I have privately contracted fabricators and welders that can come in and fill the need. Um, so that makes up the rest of the labor. Uh, we do have a few shop costs like the CNC running um, built into there, but it's about a 58% profit off of the $15,000 base kit. To follow up on that, you outsource all manufacturing? No. So we bring, the manufacturing is done in-house. We just bring in the work, the workers to do the work. I'm super particular and I hold everything to a tighter tolerance because I'm an engineer. That's what they told me I have to do. <laughs> um, but I don't trust anyone to make my stuff. So I bring in we, uh, the work. They've been previously tested. Contracts are already drawn up. They've agreed to the terms. They've seen the jigs that they have to weld on. And then that way I can ensure that it leaves exactly the way I want. We currently use all Colorado-based companies to do the manufacturing. And a follow-up to that, um, I appreciate your uh, attention to detail. Uh, any concern from you know, driving growth for you as the CEO and maybe um, take, you know, stepping back from the manufacturing side and allowing somebody else to, to run with that so you can go, go and grow the business? No, so initially that was a concern. I want to be super particular. However, with the amount of traction that we have gained up to this point, I have created a list of people that I would trust to hold it to a higher standard that are other engineers, that are other fabricators, that I would be more than happy to step back, stay, stay in the office essentially, and deal with logistics and let them handle the fabrication. Um, I am currently also looking for a uh, shop foreman. So that way they can oversee and make sure that it holds two tolerances. So you said earlier in the presentation that you're, you know, you're, you're building race cars. Mm -hmm. you, you will crash as a, as a beginner or maybe even as an expert. So you know, how do you limit the liability for your company to just get souped in terms of the, the product, um, the, the quality, you know, engineering, all that kind of good stuff? So how, how do you limit that? So it's a lot of math. Um, we do a lot of hand calculations. We do a lot of computer simulations. Um, we use full SOLIDWORKS suite, so that allows us to virtually crash test the vehicle. Um, we do follow the safety standards for NASA and SCCA, which are the major racing sanctioning bodies. Um, but that's obviously not enough for me because I am scared of someone getting hurt. It is built to a higher standard than what the weight of the car would dictate because I know that's just bare bones. Um, but then we do virtual crash testing, and we are currently working on getting a chassis to do independent crash rating just to make sure that our car is safe and we are covering our rear ends essentially if somebody sends it off the cliff of Pikes Peak and decides that it's our fault for that. And then in terms of, um, you know, right now it's a kit car. Mm -hmm. If somebody wanted, didn't want to assemble it but just said, that's, that's awesome, I want one of those, would you obviously, would you charge more and, and ship that or is it, nope, it's kit only, they have to assemble it, you wouldn't do that for an extra fee? So we originally stuck to the kit base model because it's, easy, it's cheaper for us, it's cheaper for the end user, and it limits our liability. Um, but we do have the assembled option. It's about a $2,000 extra. And that comes down to the early adopters that are on the waiting list for the car aren't going to want to build it themselves. They just want to be out and racing. So we 
have expanded into the assembled market. So it's now an optional extra. If you're going and purchasing the kit and you're like, I decided I don't want to, it's worth that, yes. We will be more than happy to assemble it for you. Uh, going back to the engine, uh, walk me through the cost of the engine, how easy that is, uh, and if, you're, if I'm going to call you up and just say, give me the whole thing, what's the cost? So, neglecting optional extras, um, the end price of the car, if you were to come to us and say, I want you to source the engine, I want you to build the car, I want you to assemble it, I want a turnkey ready to go, it would be right under $20,000 because the way that it works, we have a handful of suppliers here in Colorado and then one in Utah that we get our engines from. They do a diagnostics check, then we go through and do a diagnostics check as well as upgrading a few components that we have found in testing don't meet our standard or underperform. Nobody wants their car to not go as fast as they think it should. Um, so that is what we do to mitigate any possible issues if we're sending the product out. We fully go through torque, all the, uh, all the bolts to our standards. Um, those have all been calculated as well. Uh, mark them so that way the user can say, oh, this bolt's backing out. I probably shouldn't drive it right now. Um, so that's the way it looks for us in terms of if you were to come to us and say, I want this, it's going to be right between nineteen dollars and $20,000. Um, we do offer shipping on the car, uh, but we encourage people to come pick it up so that way we can meet them, they can meet us, and they can understand that their car isn't made, their car's born. Uh, real quickly, on the engine, what kind of engine? And then most importantly, top speed. So, <laughs> so the engine is up to the user. We currently have a portfolio of 40 different engine options, and the reason for that is one of the affordable racing, affordable racing leagues that is currently out and about in this region that's really popular is BMWs. Your engine, if you blow it up, costs you a few thousand dollars just to get a factory replacement. We wanted people to be say, oh, I want 150 horsepower. Okay, here are your options. They're all right around $1,000 if you're gonna source it yourself. Um, oh, I don't need 150 horsepower. I'm good with 100. Okay, here are seven options, and they're around $800 a piece. We want the end user to feel like this is their car, and if they do pick the poultry 50 horsepower engine, they can say, oh, it's too slow, I want a bigger engine. They come to us, order the package for the new engine, it ships to their house, they get the engine, and then they can put in a 200 horsepower engine. Top speed is currently calculated at 230 miles an hour, but the test car, when we tested that, is a flying brick and we hit about 140. <laughs> and that was with 140 horsepower. You're welcome. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you.